Today in this talk, I will present a case study where we will demonstrate how we can apply modeling and simulation to establish appropriate bioequivalence limit for complex products. So as we have discussed earlier today also, for complex formulation due to their local site of action, the plasma concentration sometimes may not be an appropriate indicator of the pharmacological activity. They can be also long acting, so which can lead to a much longer study duration and which can lead to a high dropout rate, which can also lead to, to increase in the cost and time. A lot of times the comparative clinical endpoint B studies are kind of a fallback options and that we know they are least sensitive, least reproducible and include a lot and they require enrollment of large number of subjects. So, with the appreciation of the complexity involved in demonstration of bioequivalence, we will demonstrate how modeling and simulation can be used in proposing a new bioequivalence metric or, or can be useful in exploring different approaches. So in this direction, I will present a case study where modeling and simulation is used to propose an alternative B metric for a one at one year for a five year long acting complex product. So the example here is about levonorgestrel intrauterine system, which is a progestin containing intrauterine device. And it is indicated for intrauterine contraception for up to five years. And also for the treatment of heavy menstrual bleeding for women who choose to use intrauterine contraception as the method of contraception. The system consists of a T body polyethylene frame where the drug is in that cylindrical reservoir. And there is 52 milligram of levonorgestrel, which is released from the initial time point at 20 microgram per day and is reduced to. 10 microgram per day at the end of 5 years, which is 50 percent. So, this product was approved in US in 2000 and even after the expiration of the exclusivity, we do not have any generic, generic drug product in the US market. So, there are several challenges in developing BE approach for this product because the levonorgestrel is released at the local site of action in the uterine cavity. So, a conventional PK based B approach may not be an indicator of the pharmacological, uh, may play a lesser role for the pharmacological action. In addition, since this product is approved and indicated for 5 years, doing a clinical study for a 5 years is also where is practically infeasible. So, accordingly, we explored if we can come up with an alternate B study design. In which includes a physical chemical characterization as has been discussed earlier in the day for different other products and a short term B study. So, the current present in the current presentation, I will assess also how we can assess B metric using the modeling and simulation and this presentation will mainly deal with the, the short term B study design. So, as we have discussed because the levonorgestrel is uh, released in the uterine, intrauterine cavity, we cannot directly measure the concentration of levonorgestrel in the uterine cavity. And so, we came, we explored other alternative B approaches and we came up with residual levonorgestrel, which is the amount of the levonorgestrel which is left in that system and, by, and whatever is released we can calculate based on whatever is left in the system. And so, this was used to explore as an alternative B metric. And for that, we use evaluated 90 percent confidence interval on residual levonorgestrel till 5 years. And we found in our analysis that if we can use a much tighter B criteria at one year to be 95 percent lower limit and upper limit of 105.26, it can ensure uh, that the residual level and residual amount remains within that 80 to 125 percent of conventional B limit. So, for that we used a mathematical model which is a mono exponential equation and uh, before doing the modeling, we also extracted a lot of uh, the 
data which is submitted by which is submitted to the FDA for similar products in the INDAs and NDAs. In the mathematical model of one exponential equation, the A is the initial levonorgestrel drug amount which is close to 52 milligrams and then the K is the release rate constant. minus 4 and the CV of 10 percent gave us a good explanation of the data which we had extracted from the in-house data submissions. In this plot you can see the y axis is the residual levonorgestrel content and the x axis is the time in days and the solid circles are the observed data of residual levonorgestrel and the different colors indicate the data collected from different studies. And as we can see the simulated, the model simulated at concentration which is light blue in where well captures all the observed data in the studies which we had. So then we simulated multiple hypothetical scenarios. For example, a generic product can differ or can have a different release rate constant and uh, we hypothesize different generic test products with different release rate constants can differing by 5 percent, 20 percent to 100 percent. And we did a virtual BE analysis with 20 subjects in each arm, a parallel study with using 80 to 125 percent B conventional BE limit. And these are the results which we got. So, as you can see, when the release rate constants in the simulations when the release rate constants were higher, there at five years the products with the more than 20 percent higher release rate constant would fail the B study. Although if you use the same B metric at one year, all the, those failing products would also have passed at one year. This is a visual this is the visual prediction of uh, the RLD, the reference level drug, drug and the different test generic product scenarios and as we can see if the release rate constant is much higher than 20 percent, it significantly under predicts the, the observed level of the concentration in the in-house data which we have. The similar results were obtained when the release, when the hypothetical generic product had a much slower release rate constant. And in this scenario also the, the hypothetical generic test having more than 20 percent slower release would have failed at the end of five years. But at the end of the at end of one year if you use the 80 to 125 percent B limit they would all pass. And this is the visual prediction as you can see more than this much slower release rate constant of higher than 20 percent would significantly over predict the uh, observed data. So this led us to think and in consultation with Office of Biostatistics, we explored if it must tighter B limit at the end of one year can be used as and that if that can ensure that at the end of five years the products are by equivalent using the 80 to 125 percent B limit. And for that we did some virtual B simulation and we compare the passing rate so the study would have the if the title B limit can ensure the same passing rate at one year which is same as the passing rate at five years using the 80 to 125 percent B limit. If we can use that 
tighter be a limit that would be ideal. So, in this study if the blue lines, the blue solid lines are the passing rate at the end of 5 years and when we simulate a different type of B limits at, one, at the end of 1 year, we saw that uh, close to 95 percent B limit would ensure the similar passing rate at the end of 5 years. So, we further wanted to evaluate if uh, this is not too stringent or if it is reasonable B limit. So, for that we retrieved data at the end of one year for, for the data which we had internally for two different formulations. One is formulation C which is marketed in Europe and formulation D for the same product marketed in US. And we second product we compared is the marketed product in US and a similar product with a similar release profile. So, and for both of these products using the 95 to 125 B limit. As we can see the in the parallel B studies, the lower and upper limit were well within the 95 to 105 for both scenarios. So, this gave us more confidence that uh, this 95 to 105 if applied at one year can be useful to ensure B limit at the end of 5 years. So, in summary we use modeling and simulation to assess potential B metric and in our analysis if a must tighter B limit at the end of one year for 95 to 105 can be used to ensure the similar B limit at the end of five years. And a one year in vivo B study obviously would significantly prod, uh, enhance or shorten the product development timeline and could potentially encourage generic competition in this product category. So, this is what the FDA can do and now I want to talk about what the END applicants can do because FDA is limited with the capacity which we have. So, so for the generic drug development I think there are a lot of models which are published during the drug development by the RLD holder. So, the models can be published either in the, the manuscripts or they are also submitted routinely now it is when the NDA submissions. So, and the NDA reviews are also publicly available at drugs at FDA. So, the sponsors can look at those models and what we have to do is to identify the key model parameters that can influence the rate and extent of absorption. Because that is what we are, where the generic drug is different than the RLD. The API is same. So, the distribution, disposition, all those parameters can be similar. So, what can be different is the absorption parameter. And when you identify those parameters as I have done, you can also simulate different scenarios which can be used to define or justify a shorter duration of study or you can simulate multiple scenarios of bioequivalence or non bioequivalence or to adequately power your study the sample size how much it will be required. At the end there are if you have alternative approaches to demonstrate bioequivalence you can submit the proposal to the FDA's pre-NDA program as has been discussed in detail in the morning and these are some helpful resources for the pre-NDA program. And at the end I would like to thank the entire team which was part, it was a cross office collaboration to develop this, this metric and I would like to thank all, all the FDA reviewers in the office of OGD, ORS as well as Office of Biostatistics and especially Songu who contributed immensely in this project.